Hello dear students, so we have seen uh, in our last class the concept of gradient and gradient uh, descent and uh, uh, gradient descent algorithm that we are going to see a little bit of it in brief which I maximum part of it I explained in my previous session and then later on we will focus on the differences between different types of gradient descent algorithms. So when I talk about gradient descent algorithm, gradient descent I already told you the gradient is the slope. Uh, we, we, we always wanted to optimize our model by reducing the loss function. So we have, whenever we plot that loss function with respect to its parameters, then we always want the slope of the loss function to go down, okay, because we want to minimize the loss function. So the slope is nothing but the gradient and because you want to decrease, you want to move into the direction of decrease in the slope that will give you the magnitude of the loss function, it is descent and hence the algorithm name was named as gradient descent algorithm. You always want to find out the minimum value of your loss function whereby you want to approach it by moving in the direction where the gradient or the slope of that loss function with respect to its parameter is reducing. So that is how gradient descent algorithm emerged. So the method of optimizing the parameters by the formula which I explained you yesterday, uh, updated parameter will be the old parameter minus eta nabla f. So updated parameter x dash, previous parameter was x, eta is the learning rate in which you will be deciding how fast or how slow could you uh, update your uh, uh, your parameters and approach the minima and nabla f is the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters. This particular method of optimizing the parameters, updating the parameters every now and then step by step is called as a gradient descent algorithm. So it calculates the gradient which is nabla f of a function, it iteratively updates the parameter if I am denoting the parameters weight and bias by a single parameter called theta. So theta is nothing but a vector of parameters wherein you can have multiple weights and bias of your model. So it iteratively updates the parameters theta to obtain the optimal numerical solution of the parameters when the function f reaches its minimum value. So that is the story. You always want to find out the where your loss function is coming to the minima point. The minima, the most minimum value of your loss function is the correct uh, place where you have to mark in your updated uh, weights and parameters. You say that that is your optimal solution, that is the best parameter that you can have to get your minimum loss function and to do that step by step you approach towards that minimum point and step by step you update your parameters unless and until you approach to the optimal value of your parameter that would give you the least loss function. That is a gradient descent algorithm for you. Now. We have to note that the model input in deep learning is generally represented as x and the parameters to be optimized are generally represented by theta which is uh, weights and biases. Now let us go back to our regression model that we have been discussing where optimization was needed in the mean square error loss function that we have seen. So we have seen that wx plus b was nothing but our uh, predicted uh, output and uh, y was our actual output. So as I told squared of the error and then the mean value will give us the loss function L using the mean square error. Now if you apply gradient descent algorithm to this then you can see that the parameters that need to be updated for this are W and B. X is the input and Y is the output already we they are already known values. What you require is the best value of weight and bias here in order to get the minimum value of the loss function. So we will apply the gradient descent algorithm in order to calculate the optimal parameters which we are denoting here optimal values of weight and bias as W star and B star and by minimizing this whole entire value of L which is your mean square error. 
there. Okay, so the model parameters that need to be optimized are W and B. So they need to be updated using gradient descent algorithm formula, which I just discussed. So since now I am replacing here X by W and B because here the weight and bias are the parameters that I need to update using gradient descent algorithm. So W dash is your newly updated parameter of weight, which is equal to previous parameter of weight minus eta do L by do W. Now here I am using partial derivative because L is dependent on two parameters. One is weight and another is bias. So first time I am differentiating is with respect to weight and I am updating the weight parameter using suitable gradient descent formula which I just discussed. And in a similar way I am updating here B dash which is my newly updated bias which is equal to previous bias value minus eta do L by do B. This eta is learning rate which I already discussed and it is the hyper parameter meaning it will directly not affect the model working but it will indirectly helps you fine tune the model. Now moving on to the different types of gradient descent. Now the gradient descent approach is same, the updating uh, formula and all are same, but how many inputs you are taking at a time, when are you updating uh, the parameters based on all these timings and all things, we have got them broadly classified as vanilla gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent. So I quickly take up vanilla gradient descent for you. So in vanilla gradient descent, we, uh, we also call it as a batch gradient descent and be because of that the name batch gradient descent, the model parameters are updated based on the average gradient of the loss function which is computed over the entire training data set. So what is happening here in this vanilla gradient descent, it involves computing the gradient of the loss function with respect to each parameter for the entire data set and then it updates the parameter once per iteration. So that is the strategy you have to remember in your mind that here in vanilla gradient descent we are going to compute gradient of the loss function with respect to every parameter each and every parameter of the entire data set and then you update the parameter once per iteration. That is how a original or a vanilla gradient descent work. What happens in stochastic gradient descent? In stochastic gradient descent, the model parameters are updated based on the gradient of the loss function computed on single randomly chosen training example at each iteration. So that is the biggest difference here. So what happens here is it involves computing gradient of loss function with respect to each parameter instead of entire data set single training example randomly you will select one single training example and you would apply gradient descent algorithm on it and then you will update the parameter based on this single gradient estimate. So that is how stochastic gradient descent works. Mini batch gradient descent. So as the name suggests you are going to have a mini version uh, I mean a little modified version of a batch gradient descent here. So mini batch gradient descent is a compromise which you see between vanilla and stochastic gradient descent. It will update the model parameter based on gradient of loss function computed on a small batch mini batch small subset of training examples at each iteration. So it involves dividing the training data set into smaller batches and then you would compute the gradient of the loss functions with respect to each parameter for that each batch and then you update the parameter based on average gradient computed over mini batch. So here it takes all good qualities of your vanilla gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent and gives you and tries to give you a clear picture out of it. So we will see what exactly are the differences in elaborate way. So if you can see the criteria of the size of the data set used, then uh, the vanilla gradient descent uses entire data set at a time, stochastic gradient descent single uh, uh, uses single randomly chosen example and mini batch gradient descent it uses sub samples or small batches of your training data set and then updates it. So that is how is the size of data set used in which these 
three uh, gradient descent algorithms differ with each other. Then the second criteria I would take is computational efficiency. Due to uh, vanilla gradient descent, as I told you, it takes for uh, you know uh, all the data, uh, example samples at the time, and then it tries to update. Obviously, computational efficiency is going to low because it is going to be a very time-consuming process. And stochastic gradient descent, obviously, it is going to be high because it is one sample at a time. And then for mini batch, it is going to be medium computational efficiency. Now, when you talk about memory usage, vanilla gradient descent will use a high memory uh, because of all the samples at a time and then stochastic gradient descent is going to have low and mini batch gradient, gradient descent because of the smaller uh, subsets, it will take medium, medium amount of memory usage. Continued with the variance in parameter updates, obviously uh, there is low variance in the parameter updates of vanilla gradient descent. For the stochasticity is going to be very high and it is again medium in mini batch. Convergence behavior means how soon it is converging to its minimum point, the last loss function. So when I see the convergence behavior in a vanilla gradient descent, it's a smooth transition and it is very erratic for stochastic, it is again smooth for mini batch. And learning rate sensitivity, if we see, it is medium for both vanilla as well as mini batch, but it is high for stochastic. So to be frank, the type of the gradient descent algorithm that you choose is based very application specific. But if you would like to take uh, the best of the two, then you, we always prefer to go for a mini batch gradient descent for deep learning models. But again, it is application specific. So if uh, mini batch gradient descent algorithm takes the best out of these two techniques. So this was about vanilla versus stochastic versus mini batch gradient descent. Thank you.